Um, so have you done any recording of lectures so far? Because we've got lecture capture um, facilities in our lecture theatres. No, I never have. Okay, because it's a very simple process. But I do allow the students to record it, should they wish. And what happens to the recording once they've, they've recorded? <laughs> I think it ends up at the bottom of the drawer somewhere. Okay, because with our lecture capture um, system, what happens is it can automatically be uploaded to our virtual learning environment. Now, if students are doing their work, it's held within the institution repository. It's, it doesn't go anywhere, and the students themselves can request a copy of that, and that's not a problem. But if you are recording your lectures and students are present, you do need to make sure that they are they know that it's being recorded. Okay. And Why? what is... Well, it's good practice because if at the end of the lecture you have um, a question and answer session or any of the students' work is being shown or anything around the students that they're part of that, if you like, performance, then they need to be aware that that is so. The best practice is to just have a, a release form to hand out to all students to sign. What I do is if there are a group of students who don't want anything don't want to be recorded. I just separate it, um, put them in a section of the lecture theatre that isn't going to be within the shot, within the camera shot, so that they're not going to be seen. Um, but it's best practice if you can get them to sign the release form, because of course any rights that they have about the questions they answer, ask or um, anything that's said by the student or any work that's shown by the student will be um, need to be included. You have to sort of think about their rights really. So let me think if I understand this. If I was to put a lecture online, I have to get permission from my university, get permission from the students, you do, and get permission from every single image maker that I use. Do I need to actually put those references onto the lecture? It would be appropriate to do so. The way you would yes. do in a written yes. piece? Yes, you would. And would I need to show that at the end of the lecture? Well, I don't know how you do, but usually by the time I get to the last slide, it is actually a list of references. So, you know, you could put the short form and then you could have an extended list of references at the end of your presentation. Of the web addresses. Of each. the web addresses and the references of where you took the images from. Um, because it's quite important to obviously um, attribute where you get your information from and it's a good practice that we're trying to teach our students so therefore we have to demonstrate that good practice. So that would be quite a time consuming um, for me to change every single one of my lectures. It doesn't need to be time consuming actually because there are standard letters and forms already available on the web. We've got some on our site that you can have a look at that you just send or you contact the publisher, ask for this release form. Um, ask for their permissions, state what it's for, and what's quite important is to have a little spreadsheet where you can track when you've got replies and to archive that um, permission resource. Because if, you know, for example, you went off to teach somewhere else, but somebody else picked up that unit to teach, we still need to know that we can evidence that we've got those permissions to use those images. It does sound time consuming, but it's only done once. Mm. So in order to, you know, the benefits that you stated at the beginning of um, demonstrating what we do at our institution in terms of the course, allowing students, incoming students, to see what we do, to actually um, show, uh, provide a little taster session, the benefits I think outweigh that, that little bit of effort. Mm. Okay, thanks.